All right, guys, we are doing our first section of sticky notes. You are on page four in chapter one under the study of life. Okay. So the first thing is uh, understanding that biology is the study of life. Bio itself is the prefix that means life and uh, ology means study. So there's lots of words that come from that. You are a biologist, whether you believe it or not, because you um, are constantly looking around you and looking at living things and asking yourself kind of how they work or what's going on there. Anytime you just watch a bird do something funny, you're being a biologist. So understanding where biology comes from and a little bit of the history behind biologists being, being a biologist is important. Okay. Uh, being a biologist is more than just living animals. There's all kinds of different things that go with applied biology. So your text here talks about some famous biologists like Jane Goodall and uh, researching disease like uh, Mary Claire, but it also goes into some newer forms of biology like uh, using biology and technology together. So read through and kind of get some understanding of all the different ways that we could apply biology. All right, I'm turning the page I'm on page six, okay? Around Climate Falls, uh, we definitely apply biology to agriculture. That is a huge new field, is agricultural biology and technology. Um, a great study to invent. Okay, so one of the, the first things that we're gonna really dig deep into is how do you know if something is alive, the characteristics of living things. Scientists have basically agreed on eight characteristics that make something alive. And unless they meet all eight criteria, it is not considered a living thing. So looking at my pen, um, I'm asking myself the characteristics of living things. I'm asking myself, is my pen alive? Now the obvious answer is no, it's not, it's a pen. But you can apply these principles to any new discovery that we have to decide if it's alive or not. So the first one, is it made up of more than one cells? You could say my pen is made up of more than one uh, different types of materials, but it's not really cells, so that would categorize up. Does it display organization? So does it have um, cells into organs, into systems, or is it organized in some fashion? Does it grow and develop? Um, this means that it, it starts as one form and then changes to another form. It, it changes over its living life. Does it reproduce? And there's lots of different ways to reproduce besides sexual reproduction. Does it respond to stimulus? If I yell at my pen, does it oh, jump and run away? No, so it does not respond to stimuli. Um, but living things do, and that stimuli can be light, it can be sound, it can be chemicals, movement, all types of different stimuli can elicit a response. It requires energy. Energy can come in in many different ways. It can come in as a Big Mac, it can come in as sunlight, um, other organisms, it has to take in food in some way. Does it maintain homeostasis? We're gonna talk about homeostasis in a second. Homeostasis is a really important bio biology word on maintaining a constant internal stable condition. So yes, we monitor our body temperature. Um, a sea star regulates its water intake. There's always an internal balance that we're regulating. And lastly, evolves over time with adaptation. So that means does it change over time as it's passing its genes on from one generation to the next, okay? It doesn't have to change a lot, but it does have to change. Notice nowhere on this list is it moves, it eats, it breathes. Those are not characteristics of living things. It does not have to move, it just has to grow and develop. It does not have to eat, it just requires energy. And it does not have to breathe, it just maintains homeostasis. So those are the characteristics of living things. So I should note that by now, you have these two sticky notes applied to pages four and five, and you have our know the eight characteristics of living things and be able to give example applied to page seven, okay? All right, let's turn to page eight. All right, page eight talks about the organization within um, uh, living things, and it continues to go over each of the different characteristics, growth, reproduction, response to stimulus, okay? Make sure you can give some examples of stimulus and response that different organisms might react to besides just yelling at them or seeing a bear running to run away, okay? So this kind of covers what we just talked about in the page before. Let's turn to page 10 and 11, okay? Page 10 talks about homeostasis, and homeostasis, like I said, it's a super important concept in biology. So I have on this page, homeostasis, research further, and I have a star. The book gives a quick little example and a quick definition. Anytime I put a star or research further, that means after you finish reading, I would like you to do a search on the internet 
for homeostasis. Look at a couple different pictures, read a couple quick different descriptions, and make sure you have a really solid understanding of homeostasis and some examples. So this one you're gonna have to step outside of what the book says and research a little bit further. Okay, that is the end of our first section. So you see we've covered about six pages. I think we did six, uh, five or six sticky notes, and that would be expecting you to read through those, write your sticky notes, and be able to be held accountable for the information in the sticky notes. All right, thanks a lot.